Am I the butthole for telling my dad to swallow his effing pride and go to a food bank? My, 17 female, mom, 33 female, she had me at 16, left shortly after my little sister, too, was born. I also have a 5-year-old brother and a 3-year-old sister. We haven't heard from her since. My dad, 34 male, owned a small business that went under a few months ago due to the shutdowns and has had trouble finding a job since. Right now, he's working two minimum wage jobs to try to support us but that barely covers the mortgage and our car payments. I ended up dropping out of high school so I can take care of my siblings and get a job. I got a great job as a nanny and they're letting me bring my siblings since they're the same age as the kids, 5 meters and 3 f. I've been paying for our entire health care, I have ulcerative colitis and my brother has type 1 diabetes so that crap is expensive, my car, and half our food bill and any clothes that my brother and sister need and occasionally some new toys for them. I know for a fact that we qualify for financial aid at the hospital we go to and maybe SNAP benefits or food banks. It would make things so much easier on all of us. My siblings and I don't eat healthy. Most of what we eat are those bulk bags of cereal at the grocery store and dollar store pasta with beans or sometimes eggs or meat. It's gotten to the point where the family I work got started giving us all their leftovers so we can eat somewhat healthy. I talked to my dad about financial aid at the hospital and he actually agreed to it but when I brought up SNAP benefits or going to food banks he completely shut the idea down. He kept saying he doesn't need help getting us food and he survived without food stamps when he was our age so we should too. I lost my temper and yelled at him swallow your effing pride and go to a food bank because two crap meals a day isn't cutting it. He yelled at me to go to my room and now we're not speaking to each other. Am I the butthole for yelling at him? Edit. I'm not calling CPS on my dad so y'all can stop suggesting that. He's trying his best edit, I sent my dad the post. He finally came to his senses, we're going to start applying for benefits tonight edit, for those of you asking about my education, I'm planning on getting my GED in May and starting community college in the fall. Not the butthole. Crap ain't normal, and he's under a lot of stress. Likely hates feeling you already had to drop out of school and that he's not cutting it as a man. But he's got to get past it, and maybe this was the kick in the ass he needed. Edit, so proud of you and your dad for taking one hard step after another. Glad he decided to accept some help, wish you both the best. He's let her drop out of school to be a co-parent and refusing to take assistance. That's such BS. Op I feel really sorry for but she needs to tell dad she's going back to school if he's such a proud man and can do it himself yikes. It's entirely possible that the benefits they would qualify for would be equal to, more than, or slightly less than what original poster makes. This is parentification and it's awful, he didn't even try all the avenues to make ends meet before having his daughter be a second parent. It's gross. Original poster's future is greater than his pride. I'm not going to stand here while you buttholes vilify a man that went from possibly financially okay to struggling and broke in a period of months. You have no idea what is going through original poster's dad's mind when all of this happened and he likely doesn't know how to best handle the situation but is trying. This subreddit isn't for crafting on someone else, it's for telling original poster if they were the butthole in the situation which they aren't. Original poster and her whole family were dealt a very crafty situation and you and the other buttholes here trying to drive a further spike between her and her family when they are likely all they got is sickening. It's disgusting. Their mom went off two years ago. On top of having to transition to single parenting, the man got effed over by a global pandemic. The amount of stress on that man must be incredible, yet he's still trying to provide for his family as best as he can. Ops edit just further proves that he loves his kids and simply made a mistake. Probably going to get downvoted to crap for this, but I'm annoyed about how many people are solely blaming corporations for small businesses struggles when the government kept them shut down for so long. Large businesses had the resources and connections to survive while small businesses didn't. Nearly 18,000 small businesses, over one-third, in my state have closed since the pandemic started, while our multi-billionaire governor insists they aren't paying their fair share of taxes. This problem is uniquely American. The rest of the developed world use their wealth to help support their citizens and businesses. Not America though, because the right has everyone so afraid of socialisms and not living in reality. Very sad for such a wealthy country to be so callous. 
In Germany people on unemployment got a few euro a month for masks on top. You must wear FFP2 masks in public transport. That bonus can hardly buy two masks a month. Support for small businesses for December wasn't distributed when I last checked in February. Many people are financially struggling right now and get nothing to help with pandemic extra costs. Just because the USA are extra crafty doesn't mean the rest is great. Thus far, the US has given out a lot of, largely untraceable, money to huge corporations that didn't need it, some individuals got $1,200 once, and $600 once in the last 13 months. The US has utterly abandoned its people while we drown in debt trying to get by, meanwhile the prices of everything are climbing higher and higher. I am sorry to hear things aren't stellar in Germany, hopefully they improve. Damn meanwhile in the UK we got about £100 extra on our benefits, which are about to go up again with inflation beginning in April, the fourth round of small business grants has just been announced, though won't be distributed until April I think, a third of the population vaccinated, and all the food banks have adapted to a delivery method any day of the week, rather than the limited collection method they previously used. I'm genuinely surprised, having lived in both countries that the German government would be struggling so much with this. Especially considering all the other bullcrap like Brexit that should have the UK basically going down the toilet in comparison. Also taking the USA as a threshold to surpass in terms of social system slash service is not the point you want to be at because then you will be doing the bare minimum, rather it should be taken as a warning sign what happens if you F with that system. She needs to tell dad she's going back to school if he's such a proud man and can do it himself that is really easy to say from a position of privilege. Right. And her little siblings. What go to foster care? Selfish prick. You know, that's really fantastic advice. If you've never been in this type of situation. What a stupid ass statement. Nope. If he'd let you gotten child care assistance or at least talk to a social worker, she wouldn't have had to drop off out. She needs to call CPS and let them know what's going on and they need help but dad won't do it. CPS does not help. It'll just move all the kids to foster care, likely not even place together. CPS is 100%, not going to take children out of a home just because they're poor. CPS has few enough resources as it is, they can barely find placements for kids who are legitimately being abused and neglected. If they started removing children because they ate cereal for dinner they'd run out of beds in 10 minutes. A social worker could advise the family on what resources they need to apply for and will possibly even help get them in touch with other services that could help, depending on how overstretched the social worker is. It's exactly what this family needs. CPS isn't some baby snatching monster, they don't remove children to a non-family foster home unless there's no other option. I don't know where you're from, but it's common here in Massachusetts. CPS will remove children for less. If you're poor or homeless your children can be placed in foster care until you figure things out. This happens to single parents more often. This is simply untrue in any state. Poverty is not considered abuse or neglect until it gets to the point of causing provable harm to the child. A very close friend is one of the good guys working for DCF in my state. They vent quite often to me about certain cases that shouldn't be. I have also had friends involved with DCF here. It may not work like that in your state, but it does in mine. My brother-in-law worked for DCF slash CPS for a while and he literally went home one night and told my sister he can't go back working for them. He said the system is so messed up that he couldn't deal with it. There were kids that were obviously being abused but they were too scared to admit it when asked and without definitive proof, the kids would not get taken. Then you would go to a house where a parent was trying their best but would have a small slip-up that didn't hurt the kids and the kids would be taken and then it would be so hard to get them back. I worked for a family law attorney and she had a couple clients that had completed their case plan but couldn't afford their own apartment that met their definition of stable housing so they would have to work for months to save up before they could get their kids back. They make it impossible because the case plan usually involves a bunch of classes and therapy sessions, group and individual, which makes it near impossible to work a full-time job. But then you have to have stable income and stable living to get your kids back. Do you have any experience with CPS slash CFS, etc. because you're sounded awfully uneducated? Take a look through half the replies to any comment that says call CPS. And you'll realize life is not as rosy as you paint it. From personal experience and friends' experiences, 
yeah the system will take children for whatever reason they see fit and lie while doing it. Maybe? Web link. Prior CPS worker here. You're 100%, right? No one would ever pull a child from a home for being poor. In fact, at my job we had a closet full of food, diapers, clothing, and other essentials we could bring to disadvantaged families. Jesus. Calling CPS for reasons like this are why caseworkers are so overworked and don't have enough time to investigate the real abuse. They don't take kids that are living out of cars and motor homes where I am, so long as they are fed and aren't being abused. People stay in shelters with their kids too. Being poor isn't a crime. Same here. Nobody cares what kind of shelter you have, rent, own, stay with family slash friends, live in a camper, and have a steady bed at a shelter, whatever. The only non-negotiables are you have to have shelter, consistently, with access to running water and heat when needed, and you have to feed the kids, and send them to school at least 60%, of the time. Do those things, don't beat slash molest them, and don't leave kids under 7 to 8 home alone for more than an hour and all you're going to get from CPS is help accessing services you might not be aware of. Every story I've personally heard about unreasonable CPS workers snatching babies from good parents for no reason have boiled down to things like yeah I was passed out drunk slash high on the floor, but my 3 year old was just watching TV and didn't even care so it's nobody's business. Or my crazy ex called CPS just because I left my kids alone overnight while I went out. It's never actually their meals aren't as nutritious as they could be so all three of my kids were immediately sent to different foster homes. What do the policies on paper say? Word for word. Because if it says poverty is not considered abuse or neglect and it isn't followed up with a definition of what poverty means, then poverty could mean whatever the social worker decides is appropriate, and that's dangerous. You can't honestly think that there isn't a strict set of guidelines state social workers have to follow. Nobody here understands anything about CPS. There is so, so much misinformation and misunderstanding about what it is because parents investigated by them sure as hell aren't going to be truthful about what they were actually being investigated for and these people believe whatever they were told when they were kids by their parents. Yeah as a licensed social worker as well as a mental health professional, this is all very silly to read. Paradoxically, calling CPS is almost always disadvantageous to anyone in real danger, yet around here. We have real cases that I have seen where children are safe at home yet their parents smoke weed, so they take them away. Usually with reunification in mind, but yes CPS is one of the most broken and useless systems out there. Exactly, as long as the kids aren't literally starving because there is no food they aren't going to take them. However, CPS might be able to help them get on benefits and help with food. I can't believe your ignorant comment is upvoted this much. If CPS were to get involved, the first thing they would probably do is help original poster and her family enroll in assistance programs. They don't just come in and confiscate kids from their parents if they're struggling financially. Foster care is the last resort. Jesus Christ. Or worse, they'll do nothing at all. CPS is not perfect. They're just as broken and corrupt as the rest of the system. Not the butthole you're right, it's just his stupid pride. You're sacrificing a lot for your family right now before you're even a legal adult, the least you deserve is some decent meals. I'm heartbroken for any parent in the situation he's in. But he needed to have it pointed out to him that it's pretty silly for him to think that letting his kids go without food slash nutrition and education leaves him with more pride than using the social safety nets that he pays into out of each paycheck. He's making life harder for all of his kids, especially op, unnecessarily. Yeah I agree. It's this old-fashioned idea that if you need to go on government assistance you're a lazy sponge, mooching off of people. But clearly, if this guy's working two jobs he's not lazy. I said it in another comment but I'll say it again, it's not his fault corporations are allowed to pay people so little they can work full-time and still need government assistance. He's not a bad father, he just needs to realize how illogical he's being here. Particularly when original poster has ulcerative colitis. I've got a sibling with that. You need to be on a low FODMAP diet to treat slash manage that, pasta and cereal are not suitable. Eating the wrong foods can cause a flare up and kill her if untreated. This is particularly concerning in the US with such terrible health care. 
not the butthole. The social safety net exists for a reason. Plus, the pandemic is still going on. Things will be different when we are past all this, and he might be able to find what he needs in terms of work. And hopefully you can return to school. You've put your whole future on hold for your family. You're risking more than his pride is worth. Original poster replies. I'm planning on getting my GED and going to college to be a nurse practitioner once things calm down. Good. You're already showing your resilience with how you're dealing with the times. You'll do well when you are able. And that level of dedication will make you a great nurse. Original poster replies. Thank you. Yes. Just to tack on here. I'm sure that I speak for a lot of people on here when I say that you should be proud of yourself. You're a very impressive young woman. That's awesome. It sounds like you're already aware of a lot of good resources, but just so you know I went to community college and got two scholarships there, and whatever was excess I got to keep in cash. So apply for all grants and scholarships you're eligible for, even if you have things covered. Jumping onto this to add that there are scholarships for so many random things. There are plenty of websites, and I highly encourage you to utilize the financial aid office at your school to your fullest advantage. If you're dedicated they'll go to bat for you, mine have with my mental illness paperwork, bless them. Also, I'm not sure about in the States, but in Ontario, if you're helping to manage the household and are managing your own budget, paying bills, helping parent, this experience can transfer into adult education credits, which count towards your secondary school diploma. Hope this helps. You are not the butthole, and while I stepped up to help my dad, I didn't have to leave school. Your dedication to your family is admirable, but don't let yourself fall by the wayside, remember to take time for yourself to breathe and do something you enjoy, user sci can think off a name, reddit link. Don't be afraid to use this experience as a cash cow for scholarships to help pay for school. Scholarships and foundations love to hear stories of resilient individuals working hard to make their dreams come true. Original poster replies. I already thought of that. Not the butthole and see if you can access a food pantry or something too. Not the butthole. He absolutely needs to suck it up and register for SNAP, Medicaid, and food banks. That diet isn't doing anyone any favors, especially the T1 diabetic. You may be able to call around and go to a food bank yourself, but SNAP and Medicaid are going to need the legal adult to register. Edit, up, at a bare minimum, some form of bean slash legume needs to be added to this diet especially if you don't get eggs often. Skip some of the pasta, add the beans. Bananas and generic frozen vegetables are also relatively cheap. Going to cost a lot more if the kiddo is hospitalized for hyper slash hypoglycemia from swing up and down on the carbs. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.